Scala, a compilation of light bouncing from objects around us, which are interpreted by the retina in our eyes to give us a version of reality. In movies, color is used to convey a stronger and more poignant message. But how was it that what we take for granted now was once upon a time so unreachable? My name is Werner Carrasco, and this is a short story of color in film. Throughout the second half of the 19th century, color photography was already a well-established technology through photographers such as Louis du Huron, whose discoveries played a vital role in movie pictures. Some of the earliest attempts at color was hand coloring. Both Thomas Edison and the Lumiere brothers recreated this painstaking method of coloring film. George Melies' A Trip to the Moon was hand colored frame by frame. Of course, stenciling and toning the film stock replaced all this soon after. In 1899, an English photographer known as Edward Raymond Turner patented a three-color motion picture system. A short footage created by Turner was discovered and restored by the National Media Museum in England in 2012 and is reported to be the oldest known color movie. Turner's invention led the way to what became known as Kinema Color, developed by Albert Smith in 1906. It consisted of using two colors exposed through alternating red and green filters at 32 frames per second. This opened the way for a more commercially viable industry. Kinema Color was in direct competition with Technicolor, a company headed by Herbert Kalmus who also used the two color system with film stock cemented back to back. In 1922, Joseph Schenk produced Toll of the Sea using this method and along with The Black Pirate, produced in 1926, helped restore faith in the new technology. This finally provided a handsome return after many years of financial disappointments. However, the Great Depression in the early 1930s brought the good days to a sobering jolt and business dropped down to almost nothing. In 1932, William Young, an employee of Technicolor, built the first three-strip camera using red green and blue colors. With the studios about to seize all color films, it was Walt Disney who gambled on a new system. His first project, Flowers and Trees, was a resounding success. In 1935, Pioneer Pictures Corporation produced the movie Becky Sharp, which was the first complete film using the three-strip color system. In 1950, a federal consent decree broke Technicolor's hold on the movies. And in that same year, Kodak introduced a novel and economic technology known as Eastman Color. A single strip, 33 millimeters negative positive process incorporated into one strip of film. Although prone to quicker fading, Eastman Color was significantly inexpensive and could be used with conventional cameras. Eastman allowed the film industry to finally embrace color and was a system of choice up until the 1970s when Technicolor had a brief comeback with movies such as The Godfather. Technicolor, Kodak, and Fuji, amongst others, have brought in a more aesthetical perspective in the use of color. To this end, color of various sepia tones and even black and white serve to highlight a point of view, whether it be political, cultural, spiritual, or simply fantastic. Color in movies can be more than a visually artistic endeavor. It can serve to proclaim an inspiring and lasting message.